The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 25 minutes to go until the start of trading and you got markets in negative territory to kick things off. You're looking at an S&P negative by more than 1%, trading at 4,039. You're negative by 45 points. 1.12% to start things off. Man, quite a miss from Target. Target trading down 20 plus percent this morning. We'll jump over in a moment. It's not just retail though. You got the NASDAQ 100 down 1.5% right now. 188 points in the red, 12,372. The Dow off 274, 32,307. We jump to Bitcoin, back under 30,000, 29,455. We get the price of crude this morning, which just above 112. We were at 115 yesterday. We're at 111.20 right now, crude, a dollar sixty higher on the session. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstack coming up at uh, 40 past the hour. We talk a little bit of Forex. We always talk a little bit of crude as well. It's been quite the crude bull for a while. And man, you talk about a crude market. Watch out. Gold contract this morning, negative by six dollars at 18.11. Uh, gold up to above 18.30 yesterday before pulling back. We have a low this week of 17.85 on Monday, and we jump to notes and bonds as we get a little bit of a pullback as well. You get the 10 year off six ticks at 118.21. We get the 30 year right now, negative by eight ticks at 138.13. We jump over to the VIX as we got markets accelerating to the downside. We had a 25 VIX yesterday. We got a 27.30 VIX so far this morning, elevated just a bit. All right, let's kick it off with Target. Yesterday it was Walmart. They miss in dramatic fashion. And Target, you can't overstate it. They're down $55 right now. What is that going to be? $42. That's 25%, folks. 25%. It's not stopping. Uh, you're basically at lows. You closed yesterday at 215. And keep in mind, you're already down 2.5% from where we closed out Monday. So the market was already pricing in a 2.5% drop because of Walmart's disappointment. Walmart down double figures, I think, itself yesterday, which is pretty remarkable for the size of the company it is. But you're talking about Target, man. Target, I think you kicked off yesterday at about $100 billion market cap. Yeah, you sure did. Because this morning, you shaved 25% off that. You're down to $75 billion. Now, taking a longer-term look at Target, you've had quite the rise. You're going to open this morning at 160 right at the 618 folks you were just trading late april at 254 okay my dad's newsletter this morning on market insights i was reading it he was saying hey you know this isn't growth stocks this isn't multiples this is i think he put it mainstream america folks um watch out for a bear market when you got companies like walmart and target tumbling to the downside i mean absolutely remarkable right so much for the 382 so much for the 50% re retracement. We're going to literally open at just about the 618. Maybe that's where we find a bid. Maybe we give it all back. Absolute, absolutely remarkable. The run started on the COVID lows, folks. COVID lows. Are we going to go to COVID lows? We're going to open at 90 bucks. Yeah, far off from the 160. But as I just said, we were just trading at 254 a month ago. 254 a month ago. It's almost hard to believe as I say that. And we're going to open at 160 for Target shares. You jump over to Walmart. We'll pull up those Target numbers in a while, in a moment. Walmart, now we have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. Quite the pullback yesterday. We're going to open down about two bucks today as they're getting punished a bit for the Target miss as well. You back it up to the lows of last March on Walmart. You're talking about a low 126 there. You had quite a consolidation. Walmart had been one of the better stocks this year, trading up to 160 in April. You opened the year at about 144. Walmart going to open at 128, the 50% retracement in the entire COVID run, uh, looking at 127. And if you make it back to the 618, you're only talking about $10 from where we are in Walmart, uh, 121, the 618. So back to Target. Let's take a look at it. Uh, Margins, profits, that's what it's all about, folks. We'll slide it up to the headline. 
costs, not at profit. That's one way to put it. The company sees a lower operating margin and inflation squeeze, freight and fuel expenses. Freight and fuel. I think I saw something like a billion dollars for the quarter for freight and fuel expenses uh, show little sign of easing. I would agree with that one, folks. We just saw the price of crude. Crude's trading at 111. I have a... Uh, I... I anticipate that our man Teddy Kegstad is not going to see that crude market pulling back. Many people do not see that crude market pulling back anytime soon. And especially when you talk about pulling back anytime soon on like a quarterly basis, right? On a two month, three month basis, we're already into the next quarter of these companies. And we got crude sitting at 111 right now with no shot, no sign of uh, easing in that crude market. So operating profit will amount to only about 6% of sales this year two percentage points below the previous forecast uh, and the company's first quarter adjusted profit missed the lowest of 23 analyst estimates. So Bloomberg's got 23 analysts out there. They span a number of different estimates they were looking for and Target comes in below them all. We were less profitable than we expected to be or intended to be over time. Excuse me. That's or intend to be over time. Looking ahead, it's clear many of these cost pressures will persist in the near term. Now, taking a look at the operating margin under pressure after a pandemic pandemic era boom. I mean, they were doing almost 10 percent margins for a business like Target, man. Um, that was some big, big margins. And just like that, uh, you're down to, I guess, 5.3 is the number. They said 6 percent up there. You're down to 5.3. And yeah, it's going to continue for the near term. More dramatic than what Walmart posted on Tuesday. Clearly, there's some industry wide macro problems occurring. Food gas inflation are drawing dollars away from discretionary general merchandise, forcing aggressive discounting to clear out product. So one of the things going on here, uh, apparel. I mean, almost the scariest thing, and I'm going to dig into their conference call as well. That started at 8 in the morning, I believe. Yes, it did. Uh, because they're seeing some trend changes that are not indicative of a strong economy, folks. They, they, I, some of the wording that they used, um, there was a dramatic shift in terms of what people were spending their money on. Strong demand for food and beverages, beauty products, and household essentials went along with lower than expected sales in discretionary categories. People got less money, folks, or at least they're comfortable, uh, less comfortable spending the money they have. Robust sales as U.S. consumers powered ahead despite the high inflation. Comp sales climbed 3.3% in the first quarter. Okay, but here's what you have to consider. That's three different months. We're getting inflationary numbers right now on a monthly basis when you get CPI, right? They're running at about 0.6%, 1%, whether you're taking in everything. everything. Uh, that was three times the average analyst estimate, okay? Revenue rose 4% to 25.2 million. Walmart was only looking for 24.3 billion. But guess what? They're spending more money. And that's the bottom line. The value of Target's inventory surged 8.5% from the previous quarter and 43% from a year earlier. Their inventory went up by almost 50%. Yeah, that's not what companies like to have happen, to put it lightly. Uh, they had huge demand last year. They tried to ramp things up this year. As we've seen across the board, there was a slowdown. They spent too much money. They have a huge inventory supply. They're trying to cost cut that. We'll finish up the conversation. When we get back, folks, we'll be talking to our man Kevin Higgs from TD Ameritrade Network as well. We'll be right back. Of looming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P negative by 48 points right now. You got the NASDAQ negative by 200. You got Target, folks, negative by, got to do the math, 40, 50, $55, $53. Target is in the red right now. Absolutely remarkable when you look at where it is. Uh, you look at the expected move yesterday in the Thinkorswim platform, $12. And that's in either direction. Let's talk about beating the expected move. With that in mind, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, folks, 12 noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. Kevin Hanks, Tom White, fast market. They walk you through the day's market action. Man, we got a fast market in Target this morning, Kevin. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, you know, this is interesting news out of Target because this stock is down 25% pre-open. Their revenues beat expectations. Their uh, same-store sales beat expectations. But just like Walmart, their products were higher, their transportation costs were higher, and their wages were higher. And, you know, when, how long will these companies take this hit? before they start raising these prices. And it, it's not a matter of, you know, think about this, Tommy. If Target and Walmart were to raise prices, right, create more free cash flow, create higher earnings, they'd get called a gouger right now and, and pulled in front of Congress. But the fact that they didn't and they took the hit on their higher prices means their stock tanks. So as a CEO of this company, what should you do? I know what I would do. I wouldn't worry about about the heat coming from Capitol Hill, and I'd raise prices because clearly their costs of doing business are higher, Tommy. But it's going to be an interesting trading day for Target, which started the day, Tommy, with a 15 PE. What's it going to be down 25%? It's a great point, man. I saw that P.E. and I, I gave myself a little chuckle as well. I mean, if you're a long-term believer in these equities, 
you know, and what is the definition right now, Kevin, of near term, long term, right, middle term, when we get out of some of these influences? I saw one thing in the target. I mean, inventory, they're struggling to figure out inventory. I think I saw something trying to pull it up real quick while I chat with you. Something like inventory up 43 percent from last year's level. Yeah. So I have here a quote from Bloomberg. The value of targets inventory surged 8.5 percent from the previous previous quarter and 43 percent from a year earlier. Uh, just very difficult to forecast from a year earlier when things were surging. Now we got inflation out of control. We got gas prices out of control. People might have a little bit less money. Discretionary discretionary spending a little different. But I thought, I mean, quite an inventory build. And that's going to give them some problems, man, as they maybe they have to undercut it. Maybe they have to write off some of that inventory. Um, but in the longer term, they reiterated their longer term goals. In my head, I just said to myself, what is longer term right now? And I agree, man. You can't have a stock jumping off 25%. Um, you know they're do, doing some soul searching in these the C-suite of the Target executives this morning. Uh, we got Lowe's out this morning as well, Kevin, down a bit. Uh, TJ Maxx, I was, I was jumping around early this morning. I saw the headlines with Target. I said, oh, TJ Maxx was out as well. Oh, they're positive. Well, you got to be a, a, um, a happy camper if you're in TJ Max and you're positive as you get Target and Walmart getting smacked. The market, though, Kevin, you think this is a, a reflection a little bit of, of two of my dad put it in his newsletter this morning. That's kind of Main Street America, man. Walmart and Target. It's not just growth stocks right now that are really suffering in this economy with the S&P now down 50 points as we come into the opening bell. What's your take on how this hits the general market this morning? Yeah, it's going to be a little tricky, right? Because yesterday we had a rally and the really high profile names that led this market on the upside. So we have a segment of the economy that is struggling with higher prices, but it looks like apparel at TJX and other parts of the economy are still doing well. This is going to be a down opening because the news in Target will permeate other parts of the economy. But let's see how this day finishes. I think I think you wait till midday and then you trade this a little bit going into the end of the day. So, Tommy, I think this I think this is one of these days where uh, let's pay attention to where the market opens, but let's all pay attention to where it closes as well. It's a great point, man. And, and you know, I, I thought of you guys do such great segments with the guys and girls at like Folio over there. And I always hear you talk about Target and in my household, man, and in many households, I imagine, um, the brand recognition, the brand approval, just the general consensus of, of Target, um, they have a lot of good sentiment out there. So it'd be interesting to see how this ranges in terms of a longer term perspective. Uh, down 55 bucks though, man, that is quite a haircut. Didn't expect it, especially after you get a little bit, two and a half percent down yesterday too. You know, you were trading at 220 on Monday. You came into yesterday at 215, so they were already down a little bit. And now you're down at 161, just absolutely remarkable. With that in mind, Kevin, what are you guys gonna be talking about at 12 noon today? Three good names today, Tommy. Uh, Cisco. Systems uh, in, in the first segment. We'll do Kohl's in the second segment. That'll be a little volatile, as you know, with the uh, movement in retail. And then AMD, the chip member, the strongest part of the market yesterday were chips yesterday. So we'll, we'll, we'll trade AMD in the third segment today. Yeah, Kohl's, man. So I got Kohl's up on the Thinkorswim platform right now. Closed out yesterday at 48.47. With the target news, you're trading down a bit to $45 and change this morning. You got about a $6 move, Kevin, $5.84. That's as of the close of yesterday in the options market priced in. I was telling the story yesterday. I was into Kohl's this weekend, Kevin, and uh, I'm there with the family. Uh, we have a 15-year-old daughter, so we're, we're at a, a mall in Lakeland, Florida, and there's a big Kohl's, and with that, they have the big Sephora name outside of Kohl's that they have now. You know, that's the rage. Target, of course, has stores within stores. Kohl's has stores within stores, and I, we found it so remarkable that the sign for Sephora, Kevin, was so big, even compared to the big Kohl's signs, which are enormous, folks. You know, they're the big retailers, uh, that we thought... I was like, is that inside the Kohl's? It looks like it's its own store. No, and I'm saying, no, I'm pretty sure it's inside the Kohl's, you know? And we go inside the Kohl's, Kevin, and we walk around the Sephora, and we don't spend anything at Sephora because the 15-year-old, she wants to, she's looking up everything, and she's price conscious herself, so she's figuring out everything there, and then she's going to go buy it either online or somewhere else. But what do we end up buying, Kevin? We end up buying some stuffed animals while we're in there. Um, I'm looking at shorts while I'm in there. 
Uh, so my own personal, it was a good experience. That was the bottom line. It was a good experience in there. There was a lot of great items that, you know, we got pulled into the store through Sephora. So it's kind of interesting to see, you know, I know that that's kind of the strategy out there, but man, quite a week of retail earnings. So we'll see where we go. You want to give us a little taste of what you think about the, the Kohl's numbers coming in? Well, remember, where do you put Kohl's? Do you put them with the grocery retail like Target and Walmart, or do you put them with TJX in the yeah. discount retail spot? or apparel. So yeah, it's going to be kind of tricky how we figure this out. I'm going to have to do a little research here nice. and figure out an opinion because remember this stock is already sold off yeah. pretty significantly here down from all oh, in the mid sixties yeah. down into the high four in the mid forties. So the, how much of this is already in with uh, what, you know, with TJX up today. And as, as you said, the volatility, man. So Target only had about a $12 move priced in, and that was a $200 stock, folks. Kohl's has a five, $6 move for a $45 stock. And I got it up here, Kevin, on the Thinkorswim platform on a weekly basis. This thing's been chopping around between literally about $45 and, like you said, maybe $64, $65. We're going to open today right near the lower end of this consolidation. We'll see if it holds when they have their numbers. Kevin, we appreciate the time. As always, man, we look forward to Fast Market coming up at 12 today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too, Kevin. Take care, man. Folks, tune in every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time. We got quite a market, a fast market, you could even say. S&P's down 47 right now. NASDAQ off 188, Dow off 260. It should be an interesting open, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back in a few minutes. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P opening down 45 points. NASDAQ 100 opening down 196 right now. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. We kick it off with Amazon down 3.1%. Amazon probably paying some penalty here for retail when you're talking about people spending money, uh, when you're talking about costs. Some of that may configure to their business as well. We jump to Walmart. Continuing the pain, down 2.6% on the target earnings and target, down 24.24%, man, 163.14. Uh, you jump over to the Analyze tab. Let's see what they're popping for a PE right now. I am interested myself. I'm not sure how often this does even uh, refresh. Yeah, it's putting 15.97 right now. I'm not sure if that's calculated on the last earnings. But nonetheless, you have a stock trading at 165 right now. You jumped to Target, made 219 a share on a quarterly basis. You times that by four, you're making eight, nine bucks a year. So that's like, what, a 20 PE? I mean, at least it's nice when you have some of these equities, folks, that you can calculate how long you'd have to actually wait just to make back what you put into an equity when you're talking about earnings, when you're talking about PEs in the realm of 10 to 15. That's why you're seeing growth stocks get hurt so tremendously because the multiples sometimes are based just on this future that right now is totally in question when you talk about uh, profits, revenue, costs, supply, inventory, et cetera. Target, down 22.7, so you catch a little bit of a bid. Uh, but as I said, you had a $12 move price in, and you're down 48 bucks. Let's see how Kohl's is opening this morning. Yeah, you're down 8.4%. Kohl's paying the price right now for Target. Now, one thing that they talked about in there is that apparel, they saw a big pullback in apparel. Interesting, because TJ Maxx was able to navigate that, okay? Will Kohl's be able to do it? We'll find out. They're down 8.6% today. Now, you take a look. There was the box on a longer-term basis. You're below that box. You take a look at the three-year weekly, all right? We're coming down to the lows of October of last year, that low, 43.67. We have a low so far today of $44 on the dot, round number low, an O-Torn man, Basil Chapman, right there. Yeah, it's a tough one. Avoid retailers. Uh, what do you not avoid in this market right now, folks? You know, that is the tough one out here as well, to say the least, as we know. All right, let's jump to housing. So starts and building permits stall as mortgage rates bite. Residential starts dropped 2.2% in April and permits fell 3.2%. Construction backlogs climbed to the highest since 19. 1974. So you have starts still going on, okay, but the backlog is the highest because it's taken so long to get all those houses done as well, or just residential houses in, in, in general. Uh, so starts decreased to 1.72 million annualized rate after a downwardly revised 1.73 million the prior month. There's your starts in terms of where you are on the graph. The average for a 30 year loan, 5.3% up from 2.94% a year prior, the highest since 2009. Still, signs suggest pressures may be softening somewhat on both supply and demand sides of the market amid easing pandemic and rising rates, permitting firms permitting firms to work through swollen backdrops, backlogs. Excuse me. Single family starts fell 7.3% in April to an annualized pace of 1.1 million. Uh, multifamily, that's more volatile, because it includes apartment buildings and condos, rose 15.3. So watch out for the volatility skewing that number there. The number of single-family properties under construction continued to rise as builders make some headway, reaching 815,000, the most since 2006. When you start talking about 2006, you talk about 2008, you talk about the housing market. Um, yeah, and not surprising, folks, when you got a 30-year at 5.3%. Now, I don't, this isn't like those years when you had people just flipping houses with no equity, the market tanks, everyone's underwater, okay? Not the case. Rents are rising. They're keeping up with pace with some of what people are paying, okay? But be aware that it is going to impact that market and it's probably gonna take a little time as people are able to afford less house. It's very simple. We all understand it, but it will matter, folks. Um, and you're just seeing it happen with people not taking on mortgages, mortgages as fast as they had in previous years at a rate of 5.3%, because on a payment-wise, it really does matter. All right, there's a great article out here on Bloomberg talking about Pfizer, man. Not in good light with Pfizer, but deservedly so. So we'll check out Pfizer's stock 
today. That's a three-year weekly, so you're down a bit. You were up to 61 bucks the last year. You're you're at about $51 and change. And so what this was talking about was the Paxlovid. Um, tight Paxlovid reign stymies drug combination research. So resistance to solo therapy, a matter of time, most chemists say. The drug giant, Pfizer, rebuffs outside requests for supplies for trials. So what's going on here? There's a pretty informative article. If you get a chance to check it out, this is on Bloomberg out this morning. Uh, Pfizer is resisting requests for study supplies of its COVID-19 pill Paxlovid. Disappointing researchers who say combining the $22 billion therapy with other drugs might stave off resistance. So what's going on is they have not started any combination of trials in people. And review of the clinical trials database shows no outpatient studies combining Paxlovid, which is a mainstay U.S. COVID therapy right now, with other antiviral drugs or antibodies. Some academic researchers and advocacy, av advocacy groups say they can't get Paxlovid for human studies that could maintain or improve its effectiveness and expand its use. Uh, I'm not going to read the entire article, okay? But what it does talk about this is HIV is another RNA virus, okay, and the, a combination therapy is a mainstay for that from the 90s. And what basically ends up happening here is that eventually this drug will have resistance, okay? Um, that is what happens. So the appearance of resistance to Paxlovid is likely just a matter of time. And now these are all opinions, folks, okay? Uh, but that's one medical chemist and an industry blogger who said he's surprised that the combination trials aren't already underway. Um, it's a natural thing to try. You're gonna see resistance get built to Paxlovid. That is where a combination therapy might be more effective. Uh, resistance to back Paxlovid is easy to generate in a lab. That's a Com Columbia University virologist, David Ho, in unpublished work, all right, putting it all out there. It's a Bloomberg article, you can check it out. I'll post the link in the Tiger's Den uh, of this article. But uh, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that you're seeing, uh, of course, profits being put ahead of public health probably. Um, the company recently said it has commitments worth $22 billion in sales for this year alone for Paxlovid. So, you know, maybe public pressure will do it. Maybe some regulation is necessary, but you know, many of us are getting back to our normal life, folks. We're not living in fear of COVID, but that doesn't mean that we can't be aware that it's still hitting certain parts of our population. People are still dying from it. And you have a company like Pfizer that has a great drug there. They're making tens of billions of dollars off it, but they're not looking to the future. I mean, if one thing this taught us, folks, is that maybe we look a little bit to the future here, all right, and do something proactive as opposed to being reactive. Um, while combination studies may, sen may make sense at some point, the company isn't right now in a hurry to do something like that, CEO said um, in a May 3rd interview. So hopefully this gets a little bit more press because I imagine um, it seems like that's the case. And we all know how it goes, right? That's what happens. Um, whether it's viruses, whatever it is, they mutate, they build resistance. Uh, not too surprising if that would be the case. Pfizer flat today. Let's see how. Target is trading eight minutes into the session. Whoo, down 25%. No give up at all as uh, basically coming right into session lows for Target. Walmart shares down 3.4% right now. TJ Maxx up 6%. A winner for them. We jump to lows down 3.3%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstat. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the crude market. We got crude right now. We'll call it basically flat. You're positive 22 cents on the session, but you were high, you were lower. Right now, we're trading it right at about $110 for the price of crude. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy, folks, every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Put it on your calendar. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, so I was jumping around to some of the Forex markets. We can jump into that, but I know everybody loves your take recently on the crude market. Uh, volatility persisting, man. The market down about five bucks. I'll put it on a short-term 15-minute chart. Uh, yeah, five dollars in change. We we're at 115 yesterday, Teddy. We're back to 110. Uh, what's your take right now on this crude market? Oh, I think we're going to keep on pressuring resistance. I think it's pretty obvious that the bulls are in control right now, and I see us. Getting back above that 116 level and going back up to 120, I think, pretty solidly within the next week or so. I just think the trend is really, really supported right now. Tough to tough to argue against that one, to put it lightly, man. Um, for for listeners out there, Teddy, that are you know thinking about trading crude, I don't really trade crude at all. I don't trade much futures in general myself. Mm -hmm. But uh, for those looking to trade this market, you know, it's it's. I mean, I, I, I wanted to talk about this because even as a bull, right, you got a, mm -hmm. a drop from yesterday of $5 in a heartbeat, um, you know, off nothing really dramatic. You, you know, I, I put this thing back to last week, and thanks so much for filling in, doing the program last Wednesday. Uh, you had crude last Wednesday, early overnight, start at $98. You must have had a heck of a program, man, because crude made it up to 106 during the mm -hmm. day, um, makes it to 115. But how would you think about trading this if you do trade it when you have five, six, seven? $15 swings even within a larger trend? Well, that's a good, that's a really good question because with this kind of volatility, I mean, the margins on crude are very, very high, you know? And there, here's something also, when you look at the crude market, unlike most futures contracts, it has monthly expirations. So that rollover to begin with is constantly going on. So that already has a big deal to do with pricing. So if you're gonna trade the crude market and any type of trend, you have to really be aware of that to begin with, okay? Nice. So um, which month you trade, you know, whether you're trading the actual, at the front month or one of the back months, you know, that's gonna be something you have to take into consideration. Um, and also your risk levels, you know, um, what's your risk reward? You know, right now, you know, you 
have easily five, six dollar swings in the oil market. So if you're having five, six dollar swings just in a gy normal gyration, what are you looking to capture? You know, I mean, you got to look to try and sure. catch a twenty five dollar move. So you have yeah. to have a big capital outlay for trading it. You know, so I think that's nice. the one thing you have to be careful with. And options are probably the way to go. Nice. It's a great point, man. You know, and a lot, not a lot of people would probably think about it in that capacity, and you should, folks, because it's all about risk reward. And yeah, you better realize that even if you're a strong bull, man, yeah, there's going to be five dollar moves in a heartbeat. You know, no real news mm -hmm. from yesterday to today that would really drive that market down. I mean, I'm sure there's news, but you know, you're barely off of the highs. We were at 98 bucks, as I said a week ago. You bought that, you're up 10 right. bucks, but guess what? You had to take a six dollar swing um, mm -hmm. to the downside. Uh, during that. Let's jump you into brought up a Forex. good point too, real quick, sure. Tommy, is that when yes. you talk about the futures, this goes with treasury bond futures too and 10 year futures. You know, one of the ways that I, I still trade those futures, but I trade them mostly even oil. I use the currency markets through it. I use the yen as nice. my as my way of trading oil and the bonds. So you've you've walked me through that before, Teddy, but we got a bunch of new listeners and I love the way that you walk through, you know, the yen, um, oil intensive producing economies. Can you walk the listeners when you say that real quickly, how they would do something like that in terms of what currencies um, move and, and why they kind of make those moves? Because I think that's great education you walked us through before. Sure. OK, so for instance, like how what we're going to talk about here is how to use oil and interest rates. The U.S. dollar yen, we know that Interest rates are a function of currency pricing to begin with. So the bullishness of the uh, of the of the interest rates in America are definitely bearish for the U.S. dollar or, or bullish for the U.S. dollar yen cross. Then you couple it with oil, with a very strong bullish trend that we have right now. Japan's a completely oil dependent country. They don't produce oil, you know. So with this type of trend going on, that also gives it bullishness to the U.S. dollar yen. So that's how I say how I use nice. those fundamentals for those markets where, you know, am I currently in an oil position? Not exactly, but I am because of how I'm using that trend to trade another market. I remember the first time you went over that example, man, it was a great example for people to understand, you know, what really drives some of the currencies, man, and what drives it is real life, you mm -hmm. know, talking about commodities, purchasing power, whether, and we all know interest rates, of course, as well. Um, mm -hmm. So the yen, I got the yen up here on a daily, we make it to 131 and change a couple weeks ago almost, you had a little bit of a pullback, uh, what day is that, was that the day you were on the air, uh, day after you were on the air, mm -hmm. kind of chopping around between 128 and 130, what's your take with uh, the dollar yen coming up? Well, that's an interesting trade, especially right now as we're talking, it's pretty much off or it's laying on the lows of the day. And uh, irony, irony is the other markets are kind of flat. Oil is only, you know, slightly up or whatever right now. Interest yes. rates are flat. Um, the yen right now, I think, is just in a chop zone. This is just a consolidation period. Remember that the, the U.S. or excuse me, the uh, Japanese uh, uh, central bank and their finance ministry were going to try to defend their currency originally a month and a half ago. That's what they were talking about. They have yet to do a thing, and we've been bobbling between 128 now and 130 now for what is it, a week and a half, two weeks? You know, so it's interesting. I think that as long as, you know, the, the bluff has been called on Japan. So I, I believe that as long as the, the interest rates are under pressure and as long as the oil starts to um, continue to press resistance that the US dollar yen is going to definitely probe higher highs. Yeah, maybe a little bit of consolidation there after accelerating from remarkably mm -hmm. in March, man, 115 to 130 and change. Uh, you have a what other current setting up right now? Yeah, no, I could see it, man. You know, I mean, there's no there's no real weakness. I see a consolidation, if anything, man, at, at the highs and things can't go up forever. A consolidation sometimes if you're bull is a nice thing to get a little break before that second charge higher. Uh, what other currencies with movement, Teddy? I was looking at them. You know, we just had a little bit of chop, maybe a little bit of pullback from the trends that you've been talking about recently. What, mm -hmm. uh, what other currencies are you looking at on your radar this week? Uh, well, definitely the euro is something I'm looking to sell rallies in. I don't see it finding any true um, bounce, actually. Now, interestingly yeah. enough, we've had a little reprieve in dollar strength with those currencies over the past few sessions. And I would be very careful right now. I think that you're kind of finding a point where you can start to sell into the euro U.S. dollar as well as the pound U.S. dollar. Um, now, the U.S. dollar Swiss, we hit parity already. That was pretty okay. interesting. Remember, we were yeah. talking about that weeks ago. Yep. I thought we wouldn't hit parity until at least June, something like that. And like a balloon underwater, we've done it. So it'll be interesting to see how weak. You know, and I have to say, like, I think that we're seeing with the Swiss franc is that 
this whole Ukrainian Russian thing, when they opened up the doors to the ban- the as far as what's going on with Russian customers and stuff like that, that changes the whole value of the Swiss franc. Swiss Switzerland is no longer a neutral country, you know. Yeah. And I think I think that we're going to start to we could see this the U.S. dollar Swiss get up to like one twenty or something like that Ooh. if the world really starts to view Switzerland as no longer anything more than just a little European hideaway. Okay, and what, we got thirty seconds, man. Is is are we going to get parity in the euro U.S. dollar? When is that coming? Oh, absolutely, man? that's coming. Yeah, that has to. Just, if we have parity in the Swiss and we have the U.S. dollar yen going like this, and even the pound is is bashing lows, how how can the euro not collapse? You know, just amazing. It's going moves, down below man. parity. Amazing moves. I got them up on the charts and just uh, mammoth moves, as we know. Teddy, we appreciate the conversation, the education, as always, man. We look forward to talking to you next Wednesday, man. Sounds good, Tommy. Have a great day. See you guys. You have next a great week. one as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market markets real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative right now, 1.5%. You get the NASDAQ approaching 2% in the red right now. Dow 433 points. Russell negative 22. I have the S&P up here on a weekly chart. All right. You're trading above 4,000, 4,020. We got some tough earnings out of Target this morning. Um, and just for some context, folks, I've said it before. This market may be going lower, Okay. Uh, we've been talking about the, the 382 as well within reach. We made it down to about 3850, I think, 3855. 
was the low of last week. The 382 is at about 3,800. 3,500 is totally in play, too. That's 500 points below where we're trading at, folks. That's about a 12.5% pullback just from where we are right now. Uh, if you're in this market and you're thinking at all that you're overexposed, it is not too late to sell. Okay, yeah, it's tough when you see that you could have sold at 4,800 just at the beginning of the year. You could have sold at 4,600 at the end of March, but as my dad said many times, it doesn't matter, folks. What you have is what it's worth right now. It doesn't matter what it was worth yesterday, okay? And make sure you're protected in this market because when you see stocks like Walmart and Target tumbling, Walmart down another 4% right now, Target, now more than 25% off of where you were last yesterday. And folks, remember, that's 25% from where you were yesterday. Target was up at 254 as recently as the week of April 18th. You're off almost $100 from that price point, man. And uh, we're seeing the effect of earnings. We're seeing the effect of margins. We're seeing it across the board. Higher crude prices. We are in a period of extreme volatility for at least the next few months, right? Fast forward two or three months down the road when the Fed's been hiking 50 basis points once, twice, three times. What happens if inflation's still there? What happens if there's an economic slowdown, inflation's still raging, the Fed's hiked 50 basis points, three meetings, and the data isn't slowing down to the degree that they want? Are they still going to keep hyping, hiking? Are they going to risk really bringing us into a recession to bring down inflation? You get the point. Be careful out there, folks. Uh, did not imagine a stock like Target had $100 to the downside in a month. And that's what it just did. So not too late, folks. Look at where we were at the beginning of last year, 37.50. Look where we were at the beginning of 2020, 32.50. A lot of people at the end of 2020, when the market was at 3,700 after being at 2,100, would have loved for the market just to be at 4,000 a year and a half from then. Thanks so much for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. It's going to be a wild one. Basil's up next. Larry at 11. Fast Market. Steve, Dave, and Tom.